Okay, we are back again. I'm going to do another recording on uh, desktop recording, screencast, um, and camera cast <laughs> on Domain 8. I have uh, Domain 8 set up on my laptop over here. It's not running right now. And I have um, my TV over here running and waiting for a signal. Oh, that screen is white. You know what that means? It means I didn't turn on the VCR so it can receive the signal. It needs to be blue. Let me grab that. Uh, turn it on. Sorry, I didn't realize. And I forgot that I did two tests. I know wonderful for videography here. Okay, it doesn't really look all that blue in the screen, but I think you can tell it changed colors. So let's um, go ahead and boot it up. See, I've got I've got the VGA cable disconnected. Let me take this cable loose from here. I, that's one of my problems is I had the charging cable on there. I always like to leave it that way so that it won't run down. But you know you're restricted there in your movement. Okay so the VGA cable you can probably see that on the left of the laptop just laying there. Uh, I usually like to use that so I can control it. I see a, you know the laptop, laptop screen over here on my monitor and then I can control it with my keyboard via my KVM switch that's under the monitor there. Anyway, you can't really see that, but over here on the other side, you might see a cable coming off to the right side of the laptop. That's my S-Video cable, and that is how I get the signal around to the TV. So let's boot it up and see. I've never tried it in Debane 8. It worked right off the bat in Fedora 25, which I had on here recently and decided it just didn't run good enough. This is a Core 2, Intel Core 2, uh, 2 gigahertz with 3 gig of RAM and about 348 megabyte of onboard video memory. And I think, uh, you know, I've run Fedora on it for quite a few, several years, four or five years. And uh, I think I started with around 17 and I got up to 21 and that's what was on there. And it was beginning to get a little sluggish when I'd watch videos on YouTube. But I figured that was just all the, uh, well, the, I do have Flash on the web browser on this one in Java. But also the, I'm beginning to see that HTML5, I'm using it exclusively on most, most of the time I'm uh, Lenovo i5 that's a quad core with 4 gig of RAM and it can really overwhelm it. I have to keep uh, ever, you know, maybe I'll get, well, it depends, 30 minutes to two or three hours and then I have to reboot the machine. I mean, <laughs> but it's only got 256 megabyte of video memory and I think that's that's the real problem there. It's, it doesn't fill up the RAM. I, I monitor that all the time. Actually, it does sometimes. Sometimes any given app can start filling up the RAM, especially the web browser. But anyway. Let's boot this thing up. And um, there it is booting up. Now let's watch the TV and see if we see anything over there. I can't show them both at the same time. Um, there. Yep, there it goes. So it's working. So uh, the laptop it's set on 1024 by 768. You can't see anything but just the codes right now while it's booting up. That's funny. It's clearer on the TV. I mean, it's blurry, but you can definitely see there's text coming up the screen in the console there on the TV. Okay, so this is how I've been watching TV for years. I actually don't do it as much anymore because you can't see that because it's washed out, but the uh, logon screen is there now. So let's go back to the other camera. Let me plug my I dropped my cable in a hurry and then I had to dig it out. Somehow it even kind of got itself hung. The one that got to keep them on the charger as long as I'm running this IP webcam app or it'll run the run the batteries down in about 10 15 minutes. Okay, so there it is and uh I've already forgot my new password, so I've got to get it. My gosh, what did I do with it? I had it right on top of the others. 
Let's see. I don't know, maybe I accidentally got it moved. So, can I remember what that is? Let me try remembering it first. Let's see. Oh, wrong keyboard. Oh, you've done it again. I guess as long as I'm making videos, I can't even find my mouse. Boy, I know I didn't, I really don't, sorry, I don't really feel too good today, but I was, thing, and my mind's not working as well as I thought it might be. Oh, if I look over there at the laptop instead of my preview screen for this video, then I can see what I'm doing. Definitely, that's the second time I've done that. I guess I will definitely have to change my, <laughs> Change my password. I doubt it could be red as blurry as that picture is, but it could be. <coughs> All right. That's a real pain in the butt. Uh, I don't know why Debane still does that. You have to type in your username and then your password. And the Fedora, I've been, which I've been using all these years, uh, is you know your username's already there, and and the and the cursor starts in where you type in your password. So all I do is type in the password and go. Okay, well that's booting up. I'm gonna kind of give myself another little look through my see what I've done with that password. I think I might have just got them. I may have just got them out of order, or I may could be just missing it. Sometimes they st stick together and stuff. That's what it was stuck together. Okay. Because I'll probably end up needing it here in a, again in a little bit, and uh, now if I can get everything put away, then I'll be all right. I'm using the. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think if I'm going to be working, let's just hang on to see. I'm going to have to use since I'm not using my KVM switch. I can't use the uh, um, <coughs> can't use my regular mouse and keyboard. Well, I could. I could switch over there, and it would still work. I've got more things going wrong. Hang on. Okay, hang on. See, so, yeah. Okay, I had dropped something. I was fixing to switch my KVM switch, but I, I had earlier I had dropped something, and it hit my sticky notes down there by my KVM switch. F made them jump up, go under it, and flip straight up to where I couldn't see the front of the KVM switch. Okay, so now what? So I got that straightened out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use the keyboard. Yeah, the wireless mouse and keyboard, because switching that KVM switch was kind of fiddle it really kind of hard with me I can't get up there to it good with the uh, mic okay so I'm gonna go ahead and just open up the web browser I know it'll play uh, YouTube videos right out of the box and that's what I'm gonna do is test playing a YouTube video or something play one of mine I guess um, <coughs> and it should just work yeah it's already it's, it's whenever you whenever I uh, plug in the uh, <coughs> S video cable. It. I don't know if I. No, I haven't had it. This first time I had it plugged in, so it automatically saw um, that it needed to be at 1024 by 768 is the closest thing to the TV screen size. That's not exact, but there's a little bit missing on the each side, the right and left side. But and of course there's black bars at the bars at the top and bottom. But that works really well. It works fine for watching TV and stuff. Um, so anyway, let's see. Go ahead and click over to uh, YouTube. And I didn't even think that I could. Well, that's not the point of this part of the video. Uh, my point is not to. Uh, oh yeah, it's not logged in. I don't guess I ever. No, I didn't. 
hadn't put any passwords or anything in there, so. So that's no add-ons, no no anything in my brand new web browser. There's my live stream. Um, so at least I know it says live now. It's not down or anything. I know that much about it now. Just go to that one, I guess. It doesn't really matter. I don't see it plays an ad. I'm not used to seeing ads. I use not just for the aggravation, but for the security. There's so much insecurity with ads. Oh, that's one of those mo movies. May you know, it's my video in made in clips by uh, video clips by you know the Google Photos does that. Okay, so um, it's fine, I guess. It's going to be short, though. Uh, okay, now let me switch to my other handheld camera. There it is. Over there on the TV. I don't know. There's a well, laptop's just got its regular speaker on, so... Um... So it all works, fine and dandy. Yeah, I didn't think. Oh, it's going on. It's going. It's doing autoplay, so it's going on to the next one, and actually is going to one of my videos. So, uh, yeah. Of course, you can't see that good. I know that, but uh, let's put this all back. Um, let's go back to my. Oh, sorry. I'm confused. Go to my desktop. This desktop? Now let's just go to this desktop for a minute. Open up my browser, and I want to kind of double-check my stream health. Before I continue, I'm getting my cable back in my... This seemed easier to do in my head before I started doing it. It's not that it's hard. It's just... Uh, I need to get over here and stop that video. Oh, yeah, I can do it on the laptop. But anyway, I'm almost there, so let's live stream dashboard. Okay, yeah, I can't get to my live stream dashboard over there because I don't have my I don't have my passwords put in or anything. What I do is, you know, use Firefox Sync to do all that. I haven't done any of that. Okay, so we got a good stream. Yeah, I think we're on desktop okay yeah we are and like I've said before I can't leave it running it'll overwhelm the machine in no time because see OBS studio is always using about 22 to 26 percent of uh, of CPU for, of all four quad core of the quad core and then see how much Firefox is using just sitting there not even playing the live stream page it's using more memory and it went back down and but it'll go up it'll go up again and back down but it'll just, it, even even if it does, well, of course I don't. You can't watch it all the time, so I don't know what it does all the time. But uh, the memory will hardly ever go below that if you're on that page. I don't know what it is about the admin pages. Uh, there's been times when I couldn't even get them to work. I'm gonna close it, and I would have to go into Chrome. And Chrome work w w used to always work better. It seems to work fine now in Firefox. But but a year ago or six months ago, I was having to use Chrome a lot and. Um, and it would use even more memory. It would use a six, seven, eight hundred. It would just keep climbing the whole time you're running it. And then it got to where it was wouldn't work at all. It would write at a gig. So then I installed this one here that's based on Chrome, Chromium, and it was doing really well. It's the granddaddy of Chrome. It's what Chrome was was, was uh, forked off of. Uh, but uh, I can't use it either because I uh, I, imbe I imported all my bookmarks and everything and that caused and, and add-ons it caused the same problem but not as bad it's running about a gig of RAM it might get better if I ever let it run long enough to f I don't know if it's finished syncing this one I didn't sync and it's built on Chromium and it does pretty good uh, but it doesn't all also doesn't play all kinds of videos as well as and so and I haven't tried to add any. Uh, <coughs> Uh, you know, plugins or anything to it, but uh, <coughs> let's see. So I have to think about what I want to do on here. Um, I should have thought a little harder, I guess, before I started. 
I knew I wanted to do that. Of course, I'm done with that now. I just wanted to see if it worked and uh, does. There's a lot of things I need to do to it. Um, and, of course, I could do that by, um, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and open up. Uh, let's go ahead and open up. Um, Care FB remote desktop manager so that I can log on there from remote desktop and then I never did set up the K wallet either. I'll leave it like it is for now. Okay. Turned off it somehow well, for some reason it automatically turned off desktop sharing. And when it does that it changes that little automatic generated password, but that's that's fine. Of course I'm I'm not gonna that's good because I'm not, I don't want to keep the same password since I'm letting it be seen here, probably being seen. Leave that like it is. Now let me go log in on the um, B and C, and then I can, did I change my setting? No. Let's go to desktop screencast. Okay. I think that's the right one. Yeah. for sure what I gave it okay good thing I have it written written down yeah don't write your passwords down of course who in the, if you can remember all the passwords you, you would have all the different websites and com if you have a bunch of computers like me then uh, probably don't need a computer you probably could calculate anything you need in your head and remember everything you ever saw So best I can do. What am I doing wrong? Boy, am I. Maybe it stopped allowing me to uh, log in. Let's see. Maybe I'm thinking of the wrong. Oh, it might be this machine. Maybe I have to use that uh, other one. Try this. Numlocks is off on my keyboard, but I don't think that would cause it. Uh -uh, I don't think so. I usually try to keep keep. It depends. Let's see. Yeah, I haven't. I'm on my main computer, so Numlocks being on should be the way I want it. I believe. I'm surprised it was off. I have it to go go on when I. Boot up the computer. Okay, let's see if I can try that uh, one where you have to say okay. Got it wrong. Okay, I'm showing my desktop anyway, so let's let's just go back to me here. Okay, I'll just go ahead and uh, I won't show the screens while I'm doing it, but uh, oh, of course, Can't remember not to type on the wrong keyboard.
Okay, somehow I managed to do that. Oops. Kit and enter doesn't work. Oh, they do not match. Okay. I just can't type. I guess you can realize what, what I'm, why I'm fiddling so much. Okay. Well, of course, you don't want it in the camera, do you? Boy, it's trick. Uh, uh, it's tricky, uh, not showing what you're doing sometimes. Okay, we'll go to desktop so that you can only see something really nice and boring. And uh, desktop background. Okay. Okay. Now, I just cannot. I, I, I think what it was, was is I just couldn't type that really hard password. It's hard for me in there, right? I believe what's going on, and it looks seems that it cleared my. It seems that it cleared my yeah act, my normal okay. I thought you can, my password that I like to use the one. Uh, where you know you don't have to answer it and say okay yes I allow this if, well, unattended it's called unattended access that password got took out of there so if, you, if you're using KRFB and for some unex inexplicable reason it unchecks I'll go ahead and show you because I'm not using that password if it unchecks this box here, box here, enable desktop sharing, it also, even though this is still checked down here, enable unintended access, it blanks the password. This one here, it changed since the last time, and, and I couldn't, I could barely see it, you know, way over there <coughs> at the laptop, <coughs> but I couldn't, I can't look at some, even something that short and remember it and type it right very well at all. And so I couldn't get it right. Now, all this right here, it's just asking you to make a password set up for K Wallet. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna leave it right there and not do anything with it right now. And uh, let's go back to. Uh, I really don't know. I mean, most of the stuff I need to do, it might be interesting to people that don't know how to do it. But also, it's just a, really hard for me to remember. Okay, show this. Don't show that. So I don't think. That showing um, like say how to sync in Firefox and I don't know can I do that right now let's see let's see if I can do that without giving away things let's see I'm on am I on remote desktop yes okay and uh, let's see of course you go if uh, it, well you don't not security let's see general where's the sync there it is sync You've never used it before. For, you know, if you don't have an account, you'd create an account. Of course, if you already have an account, then you'd you just do that. Yeah, see, I'd be showing half of it. So you'd put in your email that you used to create your account, and then you put in the password, and then once you get in there, you can tell it what to sync and what not to sync. So that's the basics of that. Now, I'm not going to do it on the on the camera here, on the broadcast um, stream. The streamcast. A broadcast is, is TV done by radio signal. Streamcast is done through the internet. <coughs> Kids. Okay, so um, you could call it a broadcast if it's a broadband internet cast, couldn't you? Maybe. People call it what they want to anyway, don't they? All right, so, uh, so I'm going a little slow there. My, my, my uh, network... Thing seems fine. Last time I was on here, it was a little bit slow, so I don't know why it's uh, it's 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 work. You know, the computer, the laptop is working fine. It's the uh, VNC for some reason is a bit slow. You see, when I do stuff, so I'll, when I do stuff over there, like let's see, why am I not seeing?
Yeah, see, that's instant. I don't know if I close the web browser. I don't know if it will make any difference. I'm going to close that for now. It's bugging me just being open. Um, I noticed... Well, that's kind of off to the side. I'm, I've got... Thinking in my head... What's, what's running around in my head is... I'll go to the desktop. And I'll show what I'm thinking about right now for a minute. This is a sidetrack, but this is my Fedora 23 system, the one I've been, I'm using you know, to do my work here, to do the OBS Studio YouTube broadcast. And uh, there's the root folder. I don't normally use, you know, I've always said how I like to use the Twin Panel Crusader File Manager, but um, this was uh, in a different order today when I booted up. I think it just changed order kind of by itself. And I saw that root folder was like the last thing on the list. I was like, what? I don't even remember that being in there. And I was like, well, and I thought, uh oh, is there something wrong, you know? And so anyway, but uh, uh, there wasn't. It was just out of order, and I just how come I noticed it? And I got to thinking, oh yeah, that's always there. Uh, I think it is. <coughs> my memory, sorry, my memory. But uh, anyway, 2.6 gigabyte is all I have left in my root directory, in my root partition. I'm sorry, in my root partition. Uh, and see if you go to home then you can see that I have 19.7 gigabyte left in my home partition. And uh, let's just go verify that. And so I don't really have any time left <laughs> to, uh, that could be filled up from watching. I, it didn't fill it up. It, it stayed the same that I, cause I started paying attention today. That could fill up while, you know, your cache could fill it up while you're watching. Actually, I think all your Firefox cache and all that, that goes to your home Dawn. Uh, Firefox or dot Mozilla folders where it goes, but in, there are some cache, cache you know your system cache. Some of it goes in the root uh, side of things because it's not just the root folder that's uh, it's not just root. Let's go here. Okay, now this everything here is in the root partition except for home. Uh, there's like home Don videos. Everything in home. Home Don or Home. Everything in Home is in the Home partition, the LVM, and everything in the root partition, everything ex excluding Home, all that is in your root partition. So, and when you add apps, a lot of stuff gets put on there, so it grows and it grows, and then so I filled it up adding apps and stuff is what's happened. And so, um, you can't, you can go there, but you can't, you know, there's some folders you can view like this. It's, it's really kind of confusing if you're not familiar with Linux. That is the root of the file system. That's the root directory. But then there's a root folder. You can't go into it in Crusader. It's kind of funny. You can go to it with that other file manager. Um, and there's, root, you know, there's a whole root uh, folder and a root user and all that. That's the root user is what that is. So, uh, go back to my back to my normal setup there so let's get back in here whoops well I got out of that so let's get back in here go to the disk managing app so I can kind of check through it okay this is entire disk now there's a the boot partition that's hidden to the file system it's only 210 oh no yeah so that's a boot partition for Windows 7 and then there's 125 uh, NTFS partition for Windows 7 I'm gonna be taking that off to get about that way I'll have all that space to use uh, but I had the yeah the the boot partition for Linux for, for Fedora is 524 megabytes. That's hidden. That one's hidden too, by the way. And uh, then this one here it says extended 124 gigabytes, uh, but they're divided up. And uh, it's just like that one. That's 125. This 124 gigabytes. But since it's an LVM, it can be divided up like. And it got kind of represents how it, it doesn't really represent how it's divided up, so it gets confusing. So there's your DVD drive, five terabyte hard disk, my backup USB hard drive. Okay, 32 gigabyte block device. That is my no Wi-Fi root. That's the root partition. Uh, then there's another one that's not meant, not even showing up in that other list there, uh, the uh, swap partition. That's where, you know, temporary swap files are written and deleted constantly. Uh, that's four gigabyte of that. And then there's 88 gigabyte block device Fedora, no Wi-Fi uh, home. So the home partition that I'm talking about is 88 gigabytes. And uh, <coughs> I thought it would tell me the free space somewhere in here. Oh, it says 72% full. Uh, 
I don't like. I like it when it tells you how much actual space, you know. And that says 86.8% full. It doesn't sound like a very good representation, but uh, let's go over here and go back to this folder that'll this this file manager here, uh, KJ, KJ or KJ or however you say it. It'll let you go in there and at least read it. So anyway, there's only 2.6 gigabyte, and it stayed just like that. So, uh, you know, I guess just my normal everyday stuff, you know, Thunderbird, Firefox, and all that doesn't write anything to the root directory. Haven't installed anything. If I did, there would be some stuff written there. So I was afraid that I didn't have another day or two of using it when I saw that, you know, without it being filled up. And then if I go into a home directory... It's going to be the same either way, but 19.6 gigabyte free space. And I'm constantly, you know, taking away on that when I make videos and stuff, but then I always delete them at, as soon as they get backed up to my 5 terabyte uh, expansion. It's really 4.5 terabyte. You can call it that, and then that's not what they, you get when you buy them. <coughs> use all these, hard, all, these expand, all these hard drives these days. They used to be when you bought a 500 megabyte or... You know anything uh, all the way up to you know like 250 uh well when you buy a 250 gigabyte you don't get it doesn't it seems like the space you lose increases exponentially as the size of the drive increases you know when it if it's to what they call it and i mean it's of course it should be illegal that they even lie about the space in the first place but um anyway it, it's really ridiculous and confusing like this one here uh well of course right now my my backup drive it's got 3.7 terabyte of space on it but when i f initially installed it it had four and a half terabyte of space and i checked there was just a few system files on it there's no hidden partitions i looked through it to see if maybe i could delete something you know there's no hidden partitions or anything taking up space it's just flat and not a five terabyte drive it's a four and a half terabyte drive. Uh, and there was like not even 100 megabytes of stuff on there. So uh, I even had it backed up and had it in a folder somewhere. And I saw it today. That's what made me think of it. So anyway, I'm on a sidetrack rant. But uh, I'm sure most people would agree you don't like paying, being lied to about what you're getting when you buy stuff. So uh, <coughs> anyway, go back to... Uh, <coughs> This system, and uh, I haven't done any. I haven't done anything. It's been several days. Uh, probably another reason why I'm com half confused. I've had a head. I figured out my allergies that I thought were getting so bad were actually the beginnings of a head cold. So I started feeling pretty bad and sore throat, kind of a sore throat and head cold. I haven't done anything on this system for several days, and uh, so. Tonight, I decided to go ahead. I was actually getting aggravated with YouTube because the pages weren't loading good, and I was just watching videos. And finally, I said, you know what? I'm just going to try doing something something different, anything different. So I thought, well, maybe I feel good enough to do this. <coughs> and so I'm doing it, but I'm not doing a real good job because I'm confused. Maybe, I, maybe I'll get going here in a little bit. But um, I was actually thinking I might... Just go ahead and I've been I've been keeping my backups going on my uh, just flipping through this while I'm talking on my Fedora system. I keep going back to it. I guess that's because it's on my mind so much. Uh, <coughs> and I it should be ready so I can reformat it any time I want to. But uh, this one was I need to uh, and I'll pr I'll try to make as much video as I can on it. Like I said, I, can, I don't want to show. Um, now it's working pretty good. I guess something was just kind of making the network, my local network, lag a little bit. Of course, it's pretty good. Pretty good that I can do remote desktop and do a video stream all at the same time. You know, it means my routers are working pretty well. And uh, of course, if you go for hours and hours, I, I have I have noticed quite a few times my. Uh, Everything kind of wants to slow down to a lot of times. I, it's really strange. I'll shut down my live stream and then all of a sudden I, and, and I'm done. And then that's when everything grinds to a halt. And I have to, sometimes I have to reboot the routers and sometimes I have to, mostly it's just the routers. Uh, if, if I have trouble 
to the point that I, that doesn't help and I end up rebooting the modem, that usually doesn't help. It turns out it's my ISP, you know, not not the uh, <coughs> the router's getting over. Because what happens in your routers is they'll get uh, the cache, the RAM gets full and the cache gets full. And if you, you feel it, power them off, I mean, unplug them or turn the, if you have a power switch that really actually cuts the power and doesn't just soft uh, reboot it, like a computer soft reboot, you know, like if you just touch the button and it reboots for, or if you hold it in for sort of four seconds and it actually shuts down, that powers it down. But if you're just uh, putting it to sleep and waking up, that's what happens with some brands of routers. You that button only puts it to sleep and wakes it back up. That won't clear your cache. So if you're not sure, just go ahead and uh, unplug it and plug it back in. And so I have these three routers I'm using in here. And so... Uh, you know, I have to do all three of them to get the IP addresses all given to each other right and everything. And do the clo I, <coughs> in order in that kind of thing, you want to start with your modem. If you're going to do your modem, do it first, and then do the router next in the down the daisy chain. Do the router net plugged into the modem, and then the one next one that's plugged into that router, and the next one's plugged into that router, and then all your IP addresses will be right. So uh, yeah, but I can't. Uh, I'd have to be. T I don't even remember the password type it in I'd have to look it up or sync like I said I don't really want to do right now so I can't uh, do that right now uh, I did install I didn't show that I don't think but I did install the Crusader Twin Panel File Manager or maybe I did show I don't remember so I've got that installed on here and I don't, even, I don't know what that is that tech file is it's some kind of file Install uh, oh driver installation notes. That's the other thing. Let's open that up. <coughs> I may have copied that over there. Yeah, I think I did because I remember I saved that on my other machine while I was uh, installing via remote desktop like this. And um, I can make that full screen. It's it's ten twenty four by seven sixty eight, so it's a little bit odd size, but. It seems odd because I've got a widescreen monitor and a wide on both the laptop and my monitor I'm working on right now. But um, yeah, some of the hardware, uh, this was the note, and I copied it and pasted it into a sticky note and saved it during the installation. It's pretty cool that you could do that. And I also, I did that via, actually, I did, it was easy to do that because I was running it via remote, VNC remote desktop. So I was able to do it over here on my machine I'm on right now. Because you can't get out of that install to do something like that, you know, at least not easily. If you can, I, I don't know how you would do it because it takes up the full screen when you open it up. So anyway, uh, I was able to uh, save this exact message, and it said it tells you some uh, some of your hardware needs a uh, non-free, which as in not open source, you know, um, not as in costing money, <coughs> uh, firmware. And uh, it's the, uh, I know from experience with this laptop, it's the, uh, um, oh yeah, this is something that you really do need to uh, figure out for these laptops. Um, it's the Wi-Fi driver. The, uh, the video is working fine. I, I, everything I needed to do, I, it probably doesn't have full 3D support like for playing games, but I don't play games on it anyway, really hardly ever, so... Uh, as long as I can, you know, do my video. See, as long as used to, you'd have to install a proprietary video driver just to get the S video to play. But now you don't in Fedora or Debian. That's great. Uh, I have the I have that TV running. I guess it doesn't matter. <coughs> um, that could have been why that screen wasn't refreshing. Maybe the video wasn't working too fantastically. <coughs> Let's see. I can reach over there and unplug it. And uh, I think I'll do that because it's just working the machine for no reason. So uh, let me get around here and unplug that S video. Turn off that TV and oh, I oh gonna have to get up. Can't reach that far when I'm banging to my camera. Yeah, just 
There's no use for it now. I'm not, I'm not going to use it. I'm glad to know that I can do it, though. If I decide I want to watch TV over there, I can. And what I do for my sound is, uh, you know, being that it's a laptop, of course, it doesn't have good sound. I plug in a 3.5-millimeter, you know, use the headphone out and go to my stereo system, So, uh, which is what I do with all of my computers for all the sound. But on the laptop, I just use the headphone out. You can use the headphone out or the line out. I, if it's a desktop, use the line out. If it's a laptop, you don't have, you may not have any choice. I mean, some laptops do have a line out and a headphone out. I always choose the line out if you can because it will be a, the better, the right signal, the right better volume, the right volt, better voltage for your stereo system. So, uh, but headphone out will work. Uh, so anyway, um, let's go back to the desktop screen here and get back on my remote desktop. Okay, so um, it tells you the missing firmware files are these right here. Now, I haven't even tried this yet, but let's see what happens. Let's go into Synaptic and... Uh, We have to put in our root password to, to do any run synaptic at all. All right, now we can um, go ahead and make that full screen and be a little less confusing for me to navigate, I think. And it's going slow again. Let's see. Really slow. <coughs> Maybe it's best not to try to do full screen on this VNC. I think that does make some difference. There's Synaptic back to there. Okay, now it's, yeah, I think that does make some difference. I just realized that my uh, display is still on the wrong size. I could try and change that. I don't know if that would be advisable, but let's do it anyway. Sometimes you can change it like this while you're already up and running. Sometimes you got to do a reboot to get it to work right. <coughs> I don't know. Maybe just the. Uh, I don't. I, I. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense why it would work and then not work. You know, on my network, it seems like it should just keep working. And and I just got through rebooting all my routers before I started this, so they're not old. Tired. <laughs> I always just say the routers are tired. Yeah, that's not not even coming up enough for me to see what's going on. I can see it on the laptop though, but uh, you can't. There is another one available, which is uh, 1200 by 800. And now you can see it. Okay. Let's see what happens there. It didn't make any difference in my VNC sh the window though, did it? Let me close my VNC window and then open it back up. See if that makes any difference. See if, see if a new thread will uh, <coughs> will not work any better. Okay, so um, yeah, we'll leave it on this size. Oh, it didn't. It didn't change it to the size of, that the laptop was doing. It's still giving me a 1024 by 768 or so. Actually, it's probably 800 by 600 for what it's actually giving me. It's probably the most it's going to be able to give me. That's fine. At least now my laptop looks normal to me over there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, V43, Unicode 15, 15FW. Those are not really going to help that much. Because that's not how they name the files, you know. Uh, I'll copy and paste it in there and do a couple of searches. But I normally don't do it that way. This at least gives you some idea. I mean, you might do some Google searches and find out some information about some of it. But... Uh, go 
back to my regular desktop and see. Yeah, it's just really not responding good. There we go. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm going to close. Seems like I just kind of messed myself up because now my... <laughs> My um, stuff is is wider than my view here. I should so don't do don't what I don't do what I do. Uh, should have left that alone. I messed it up all together. I wasn't paying attention to what was going on with my app here. Maybe if I close the app all together, I'll try it one time and see if it works. I've seen it just the uh, I don't know. It was the last time I was on here, it did the wide screen. No. <clears throat> okay, so I need to go back to 1024 by 768 just so I can see what I'm doing. But you don't always have to do that. Probably if uh, I hadn't started out one way and tried to change to the other, I'd have been all right. And that 1200 by 600 is, you know, bigger and probably going to take up more data anyway. So send more data, you know, back and forth. So see if that fixes it. Yeah, it fixed it. See, now it's fitting in the screen, so. Uh, that over there, okay. Okay, now. Now we'll go to Synaptic. And you're not really going to see that B43 uh, forward slash Unicode 15 and that I don't even know if that would search right they don't list anything with a slash in it like that so <clears throat> I'll try it like that I mean looks like we got nothing I think B43 is about the only thing that might help but I actually know that didn't help either let me see before I go on and on with that so actually you know what doesn't look to me like that's actually going to be any more helpful than just to remind you that you need to find the drivers for it and it's not showing up on the uh, remote desktop like it should darn it okay so uh, go to the camera just so it's not showing up on the remote desktop like it should and uh I'll close that too. When did I switch? Oh, I see. It's working okay again now. <clears throat> Maybe having less apps on it will make a difference. I kind of doubt it, but we'll see. Okay, so um, closed everything except for Synaptic. Um, over here on my Fedora 23 system, just making sure I've got everything going. I'll get over here on my. Uh, backup drive I have screenshots I actually have pictures there they are of the uh, the Dell 1525 laptop I had it all I had it opened up uh, I didn't take it completely apart but I had it opened up where I could see inside of it now I just have to kind of go through them to find what I want oh wait no we don't want that I think that folder said merged probably this folder here I think this is the one that has has them uh, as much as see I took pictures of the screen and things that were going on and, and that reflective screen showed me in the background I'm going to go through here pretty fast just looking for the ones I want. These are different, you know, things I've had running on it since I've had it. There's a funny one. Applying, this is real. This really happened. Applying update operation 20,283 of 20,283 Windows uh, 7. <laughs> okay, now here's some pictures of the uh, bottom of the laptop. Yeah, memories with memory module, the DIMMs with the memory out. And what I'm looking for is the Wi-Fi card, a close-up of the Wi-Fi card. Now, here's the uh, 
See, that's the uh, heat sink pipe, heat sink in the pipe, heat pipe. And it has one for the, now this one has a separate vi video processor and uh, CPU, a GPU and a CPU. And I think the one on the left is the uh, GPU and the one on the right is the CPU. And, uh, and I think that they pro I think that they perform better than the integrated ones. So far they do for me. Of course, well, I can't be a real, I don't have a good comparison because the Lenovo L5 is only 256 megabytes and the laptop's 348 megabytes. So, you know, but it's only a core two. The thing is when you're watching video, I'm talking about for video. Uh, when you're watching video, this is the Wi-Fi card right here. So when you're watching video, <coughs> the uh, video, you know, GPU is what's going to make, make the most uh, difference. Oh, this is the wi yeah, Wi-Fi card is what I want. But it doesn't say that it's a Broadcom. I know it's a Broadcom. Maybe it's because I looked all these numbers up and found it. But you need to know somewhere on here it shows. Maybe you have to take it. Do you have to take it out and flip it over? I don't remember. There it is. Just that I can't see. It's a 1395 Broadcom. Now, I don't remember how I found out that it's a Broadcom anymore. But if I look up 1395 Broadcom, oops, that's not what I wanted. Darn it, I lost my. How do I get back to the way I was? There. I hit escape or something. 1395. Okay, so now. Yeah, this is something really important for putting Linux on a laptop, so I'm glad this finally occurred to me. Uh, I'm going to try typing in 1395, Broadcom 1395, and see if it, B-R-O-A-D-C-O-M. Okay, we didn't get any results. Let's see if I'm spelling Broadcom right. Well, let's try 1395 first and see how, what comes up. I think I'm spelling it right. It's not finding anything either. Try Broadcom. Okay, now that only brought up three things. Let's see. Okay, now this is, oh, it's a Broadcom video chip. Maybe I have it wrong. <laughs> Maybe I don't remember it like I thought. Let's look and see. It's a Broadcom video chip, and that's already installed, and that's working to my satisfaction. G Streamer. So, yeah, it's not a Broadcom wireless. It is, let's go back over there, 1395. I may have, I don't think I had to install, install it, you know, manually. Nothing's coming up under 1395. Let's just do Wi-Fi. But you don't, if you don't know your chip, and you can't just go look up, in case you've been screaming that this whole time, we'll just go look up Dell uh, 1525 uh, laptop. You can't do that for Linux. You can do it. You can usually get by doing that with Windows, but uh, you will not. You will find Windows drivers on the Dell site. You have to figure out <coughs> what the actual Wi-Fi chip is, not this whole card here, but the chip that's inside the card that makes it work. <coughs> The actual um, processor might be. Um, let me just keep going through here and see if I see anything. That was some distro that did that when you tried to boot it up. Okay, now that is the, uh, yeah, that's the uh, GPU. Now they're not taking, it's not taking off. That's just the heat paste. I see the heat paste had dried up on it. And it was completely dried up, and I, you know, cleaned it off and put new heat paste on it, and it's run great ever since. It was this lap. I never did ever mention this laptop, and another one I have an Acer was given to me by a friend who found them in a laundromat in a ba in a box. It said, "Here, take these if you want them," and they were both in that kind of shape, beat up and uh, full of viruses. They had windows on them and stuff, and they had been run hot for so long that it completely dried up the CPU paste, the uh, grease. Some people call it. Uh, the heat sink paste. Um, that's the first thing to look at if your if your machine is uh, 
overheating and shutting down or just not running good. The fan's running constantly and won't ever, don't want to, ever want to shut off. Uh, but anyway, that's the GPU. Uh, and there's the C, uh, that's the CPU taken out. And uh, I could have had it backwards. I wasn't reading. I'm just talking to you. Yeah, that was actually, that was wrong. Wait, yeah, this is the GPU, okay, no, 200, zero, zero, this is the CP, uh, CPU, it says it right there on that tag, yeah, CPU, <coughs> so that was not the GPU, that was the CPU, there it is taken out, and there it is taken out, and you can see the GPU on the right, a graphic processor unit, and uh, you can see the whole area there, what you see, it's pretty cool, you can get to everything real easily. Get it out, clean out the heat pipe, you know, clean things up. So, uh, I'll just go through. These are just all, you know, you can't take a screenshot uh, if you're not, uh, if you're just booting up. So, but you can sure uh, help yourself a lot because, you know, a lot of that I can read. I had a camera, I had a Nikon that wasn't a high, it was an older Nikon 775 or something. It just quit working one day, but it would take good. That's probably it right there that took that. And I also have another one, an Olympus, that is not a Nikon lens. You know, it's a plastic lens, and it takes blurry pictures. You see how beat up the thing is? Keys missing. The uh, up at the top left there, broken. Actually, looks worse now than now than it did. Then some more broke out right there. That was when I first got it. <coughs> Party Magic. That's one of those uh, partitioning live distros and back. You can back up with it and do all kind of stuff that I've used before a lot. Mem test, x86 mem test <coughs> running. So I tested the memory on it. Uh, that was some malware that was on the Windows. See, there it is, Windows. It was Vista, I think. That no, was 7. It had been Vista upgraded to 7, I think, is what it was. But uh, yeah, it was because uh, that's the. When I, I did used to, until I reformatted, I had a Windows 7 on it and uh, Fedora 21. So that was some of that malware that was on it. I want I feel I always do that. I fool around trying to clean them up, and I say, "Well, I don't want to mess with that." Look at that. That's a video of that thing. The video not working right. Video. Uh, oh no, it's stuck there. Let's see. There we go. Another. I believe a GPU. I should just not say it anymore. That's when Firefox used to use those codes for your sync, and they don't use that anymore. You just use a username of. There's that Nikon camera. Me taking pictures of the screen. See, there's what I had uh, just seven on it. Looks like. Well, that's a grub boot. No, that's a Windows boot screen. So that might have been when I was installing it or something. Yeah, Windows seven installed. And yes, it was genuine and it passed the test. Okay, so um, yeah, I don't see anything that would tell me the brand name on there. There's the MAC address of it. If you're ever wondering what all that's about. Revision AO2 DW1395 in Fedora. I think you can look up uh, 1395 and find several different ones, but you can find it. I do not remember the name of it. It could be that it's uh, now. There's another. There's another way to do stuff like this, and let's just try that. Well, let's go through these pictures first. I want to see if there's anything in else in here. I don't think there is. No, there's not. So I'm going to put this back on one of these pictures that shows me that number because I'll forget it over and over again. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Now, there's one app called Hardware Lister, but I think it has the strangest name in the world. Let's just say like HW Lister or something I'll probably just search for that because see now that I did hardware I'm going to get lots of stuff I don't think you can just type in hardware and find a Wi-Fi driver so let's see if HW List comes up with anything no and of course this is not Fedora it's Debane so it might not be in the repos too Okay, so I'm going to type in hardware, and if nothing else, here's a good 
how to find things, you know, good lesson on how to find things if you don't know how to do that. Okay. And let's, before we get too involved, yeah, there's no hardware lister on here. That came with it. See, it's really basic now. It used to come with more stuff. So, uh, that's beginning to not show up good. Okay. Uh, not refresh well. What did I search for? Hardware. Okay. If there's any good apps, then it uh, should. come up there's a lot in here that's why I need to narrow it down somehow hardware how about detect you, 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 you can think of what might be in the description of the application that you're looking for and that's how you can find it unless you know the actual okay hw info there's one of them right there i just didn't know let's see is a hardware detection tool yeah okay there's one of them okay i'm going to put more than one on there let's see hw data yeah let's well, let's let's not do that yet since I've never don't remember that one. But that one will collect information about your hardware installed on your system, uh, and it's pretty good. I want to see. I saw something that looked. Oh, discover. Hardware identification system. Let's just go with the one I've got. If I plot, if you installed a lot of things at once, that and I'm doing a video, you know, and you're just sitting here watching me do all this. So I know hardware. Uh, HW info, which I think when you open it up, it says hardware lister or something. Maybe it does. But it's only going to install those three things, so I'll be nice and quick. And uh, <coughs> throat's already starting to bother me a little bit. Guess I better get one of my trusty cough drops. I don't know. I have some. I have some in a little plastic jar, or not jar, but an, an old vitamin bottle or whatever. But I don't know what flavor they are, so I'm going to get some out of my out of my main uh, bag. <laughs> it's harder to get to. Always bang into my VM. There, my vocal processor. <coughs> Let's see. Let me get this. Okay. Yeah, changes applied. Now let's go see about our hardware. I'm going to leave Synaptic open. Well, let's close Synaptic until we need it again. It may come up in, uh, I don't know where to come up, System Tools. Sometimes when you install stuff like this, doesn't come up where you expect it or doesn't come up till you reboot hmm it's an application so it's not it might come up under administration but it wouldn't come up under preferences I don't have uh my desktop search on here so I, I can't go to um, that's what I do is go straight to the desktop search to look for things after I install them. Of course they don't always show up right away either. Okay so I'm going to have to go ahead and do a reboot. Uh, that, I think that's what it needs. So very seldom do you have to do that but there are a few apps where you have to do that. Let's see if that's the th what's going on here. And switch over here to uh, me and the computer so once it gets booted up and you see there if you don't do anything on the login screen it'll it'll just go ahead and take that top the default and boot up and uh, let 
once it gets booted up, yeah, you can see that um, crack extended all the way up there in the bezel. When I was working on it, there was a one of the hinges was just flying loose. That one, that one on that side, and uh, it was missing screws. And I found some screws that would work, but the heads were thick. And anyway, during the time of working on it, more chip, more of that plastic, it was brittle and old, and it was breaking off. So uh, I'm waiting on it to boot up. I'm gonna check my. Whoa. That was weird. I went and swapped to a different spot. I wanted to get on the desktop. And then when I did that, it uh, jumped up in front of my. I want to make sure our live stream is still good. Not that I'm not talking to myself here. I am talking to myself mostly, but <clears throat> if there's nobody there, I guess I'm talking to myself, huh? Okay, so just want to make sure we're still good and see how long we're go going. Okay, is it booted up? Yeah, I believe it's booted up and waiting on me to. Maybe it's not. black screen but it shouldn't be it should be booted up by now I'm shaking the mouse to try and wake it up hitting escape on the keyboard is not doing it either maybe it's not done booting up I looked away to fiddle with everything else it should be Unless it decided to give me trouble let's see Oh, I can't. That didn't help though. I I hit the uh, touchpad and the and the mouse buttons on the on the machine and it didn't help. Hmm. All right, what I'm gonna do then is um, It might be no, it might no that wouldn't help me because I'm doing the remote desktop and all that. Um, I don't know if it got out of whack because I unplugged that S video cable while it was running or what, but I'll just I'll just hard shut it down and try again. Could have got things out of whack. So let's see. Unless it installed a new kernel and I didn't pin it, didn't know it, and it's not working right, <clears throat> but it shouldn't because I haven't installed a single proprietary driver or anything. Sometimes if you install, I don't like to do it unless I really need it because when you install proprietary drivers, a lot of times when you get a kernel update, uh, it, there's no update in that kernel for that in it. Uh, because you've got to go manually install that from you got to you got to wait until it comes out from the manufacturer and install it. Trying to see what that was that it paused on, uh, and you got to manually install them. If you if you manually install, there it is. If you manually install a proprietary driver, then you've got to keep keep it up to date yourself. Yeah, yeah. Now you can see how hard it is for me to reach up there and type on that wireless keyboard. And I've done it again. I probably it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, you know. Yeah, so now you can understand why I'm always going grunting and complaining when I'm trying to but that's uh if I put it down here on my keyboard tray, then then I've, I actually do have just enough room to put like that little one in the front and this one up here. But it uh, makes it hard, really hard to type on this one. I probably should do that since I'm really 
mostly working with the key uh, laptop. Well, I didn't do a, a story. I was trying to keep it from not being in the video. That's why I, I started to do that a while ago and changed my mind. So, let's see if we can get our remote desktop up and going again. Now it's not. Oh, I don't have it on. So, we got to turn that on. Yeah, you always have to, uh, there may be a way to get it to start up. Seems like I remember trying that on my, some other machine. And, uh, oh, it turned it off again. It does it every time. This time I'll try and use the, uh, other password instead of going and resetting all the passwords again I think it cleared it out again oh you do let's see mm. oh that worked I really can't see it I had to grab my magnifying glass and hold it over there. See if that works. Yeah, so I have to accept the connection, then it's good. Now I'm in there. Okay. So instead of going in, if it's going to keep, I don't know why it's turning that off. Oh, I know why, because I didn't set up uh, the password manager. The KDE password manager. That's why it's not keeping my password, so I need to do that. But um, let's just go back to seeing if we can figure out my hardware. I know I have a 1395 uh, revision A02. That might be helpful to know. The brand, I don't know. I, maybe this is how I found the brand. I don't remember. Well, let's see if my hardware lister app is going to be in here. Maybe I'm going to have to, I'm, I know it, unless I didn't install the one I intended to install, I know it has a, uh, you know, graphic user interface. But guess what? It's not in the list. Oh, let's see if it's, okay, right click on there. It's not how you do it anymore. You used to be able to right click on the, and add stuff to the list, to the apps list there. It's just saying remove from panel. Okay, so I don't remember what it was, the name of it. So I've got to go back into uh, Synaptic. And uh, look it up again. Only thing is, of course, that's all cleared. What was it? HW? Something else. Let's see. How did I find that? Maybe if I just do hardware, uh, I'll sign, f go find it out just by the things that are installed. Whoop. There's something right there. If I can get to it. No, that's not it. You can organize stuff by, it's not as easy. No, that's not it. It's kind of hard to go down through there and not pass it up. Especially when you're doing remote desktop. You don't know if you can tell, but the mouse is way down below where the blue bar is. It's, it's, it doesn't, doesn't respond exactly right. Yeah, see? It's not exactly real-time management there. Uh, I know how to uh, 
organize them by what's installed real quickly in the DNF now, but I always did in Yum. I mean, Synaptic, I haven't used it in so many, very much in the, you know, quite a few years. So. And I just completely forgot what my search was that I did before. Now, see, there's X server. That's some of the to do with the video display. X11. I'm using the mouse wheel now. Doing better for me. It didn't dawn on me a minute ago that I should have saved that uh, name for me to be able to. Uh, See the MTest x86. Of course, the note was installed because it was coming up in the boot menu. You can run that. It's best to run it that way and not from within the graphic user interface. You can, but LSHW. There we go. There's one. That's might have been the one I was really thinking of. Oh, I think you have to add the GTK to have the graphic user interface for that one. I'm going to keep looking for the other one, though. Maybe that other one wasn't even the one I thought it was. It may be only a command line interface. I thought it was H something, H-I-J-K-L. Okay, so I should be up in the H's. But I'm probably wrong. See, LSHW, that's not H. I don't think there is anything that's HW. What is that? Be a driver. That's part of the graphics driver. There it is. HW, oh yeah, HW info. Let me open up the web browser, go to that web page so that I'll be <laughs> have its name up. I could have just clicked on the link, but where's the link? Oh, Synaptic doesn't have a link like that. All right. Um, normally, you know, you can... Oh, there it is. Visit home page. There we go. Oh, it's a GitHub. Okay, HW info. So we'll go to the... Well, let's install our other stuff first. And let's go see if we can go back and find it again. I don't know if I can very quickly, but I want to get its page up too in case I need it. What was it? LS? Yeah, I think so. Like the engine. I'm an old 454 and 350 Chevy guy, but LS is supposed to be the cool daddy now. Where's the uh, link? There's no link to the website. Okay, the other way to do that is do a screenshot. There we go. Now, where's it going to be saved? I, don't, I guess I've never done a screenshot on this system, so don't... I, unless you want them on the desktop, you need to go give it a folder to save it into. Go cr put it in pictures and then create. I could do that. Screenshots now should go keep going into that folder. There's another way you got to get in there to set the delay. I like to have a delay, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Now the other one is what? I'm going to install that. Let's just do that now because I have that web page. A few more little apps to install. This may be the one with the GUI because it. I wasn't paying attention. There could have been a GUI right beside that other one that I didn't install. Sometimes, most of the time, they just install it right away. But if they're kind of a command line app, and then somebody wrote a GUI to go with it, then it may be two separate things. All right. Now, um, let's go over here and see if we've got something we can use now. So, see, it wasn't that it needed to be rebooted it was that it was a command line app i believe i'm going to now watch the other one not be showing up either 
this is uh, Devane, and so we may be learning together here simply because I can't remember how things. I've used Devane enough. I used it so, so every day for two years, but that was what, quite a few years ago now. I don't think the control center is going to show anything like that. But we'll make make a little quick look through here. So I'm not seeing that either. Normally I wouldn't. Uh, ah, hardware lister. See, now evidently that is the one that's called hardware lister. This is the one I was wanting anyway. Okay, command. The action request it needs root privileges. Okay. The command is L S H W G T K. Yeah, see just what I thought. Okay. So it's L S H W, but the name of it is hardware listers. That's why it's, it's not that I just am that <laughs> can't remember anything whatsoever. It's tricky on this one. This is one of the very few that's that tricky to remember. Now, there, this is what I've been wanting. That other app would probably be okay. I think it would be just a terminal app. And I may try and uh, open it up here in a minute to just to do a comparison. But okay, now I may have to do ref yeah, you have to do a refresh to get it to scan the system, and then it, then you got to start clicking on all the little sections to see the next thing. And normally, you can move those around but it's probably yeah there we go make them wider okay there's the memory 303 tenth megabytes core 2 duo there's it tells you the processor model number and everything I actually didn't need to bring, drag that over I can sit in the laptop but not in the uh, preview there okay so uh Width 64 bits. I think that means it's a 64 bit uh, processor. Host bridge. And this may tell me what I need to know, and it may not. Let's see. Normally there's more coming out. It seems to not be not be sensing the thing, everything that I want sensed here. That's just all about the processor. So this one is not seeing all my other hardware so let's see what happens if we try to run that other one the other one is called hw info yeah this is going to be a terminal app well let's get let's go over here system tools mate terminal i'm going to add that to my launcher panel up there so i can get to it quickly yeah I think we can run it. Well, let's run it as root so we make sure we get to get everything we want. H-W-I-N-F-O. So we'll go S-U and then put in the root password. Okay. Yeah. See if we get H-W-I-N-F-O. Yep. It's running. I think it's just doing its, yeah, doing its collecting there. Now this will give you all text, but you know what you can do with that is you can copy and paste all this into a file, and that's what I'm going to do so that I can read it. But, well, let's let's try to read through it. Well, no, because okay, I'm going to hit select all, copy. Now let me just get somewhere. Normally I have these in different orders. Let me close the synaptic. I have so much running. Uh, we'll just use our Office app, the main one, writer running good it's not having any trouble whatsoever <coughs> hear the fan once in a while but that's all um, paste it all in there now if now the next before I get any further I want to make sure I know what app this came from so I'm gonna do this <coughs> HW info I don't know if I want I thought maybe there'd be a little blurb about it on the website. Let me put that in. I'm just going to do that. Yeah, here we go. HW info. There. I'm going to copy that. Put it in the uh, file. Okay, it went over there, but it's not refreshing. Darn it. Take that. 
Well, you can kind of see it. Okay, there you go. No. Now I'm going to hit save. And I know it's looking really mixed up because it's showing a cross between the two. This is worse than worse than the camera. I can actually control it the same way, but if I do the camera, then at least you can you know what it's blurry, but you know where I'm at. Okay, save as. I guess I should try on this now that I'm debating. I should try if, oh, see if OBS Studio will run on here. Then I can do my broadcasts on this directly from OBS Studio. Let's see. Um, documents. I'll just leave it like that. Bane 8.8 and give it a, well, let's just let it be the default. Actually, let's say Dill. Hardware info to Bane 8.8. .8. And if you want it to be a text file, then actually let's make it a text file. It'll be, then you can copy and paste it into things. If you let it be formatted as a, uh, Open Office file or LibreOffice file, then it'll be uh, won't copy and paste good. And so now it says, do you want to do it as an ODF or a text? I want to use text because sometimes that works nicely for a lot of things. Okay, so uh, I'm looking at it in the remote desktop view, and I have to go, what? I can't even read that. And then I look over at the laptop, and I can see it. I guess I should just close my remote desktop because it's just not working. Okay, now I am um, okay. Go back to using my wireless keyboard. <coughs> in fact, since it's really acting up that much, I'll just gonna have to use the camera view right now. Maybe it'll pick up in a little bit. I guess I should check my health of my stream while I'm at it. could be a problem if there's a problem with the network you know that's how it gets out to the internet so Let's see if everything's okay so it's probably the router that I'm on that's having the most trouble not the one that's connect the one that's going to the internet is a different router from the one that I'm you know that the laptops on I mean it still goes through this that router the TP link but the uh, Everything's good there. Okay. Now we'll go back to the camera. Okay. Uh, sorry about having to do that. Let's see. Um, okay, now I'm going to hit Control F and do a search. And what do I want? I want. Uh, no, I don't want display. I want Wi Fi or wireless. I have to look over to the laptop. Okay. Daryl Wireless 1395 WLAN mini card. Uh, Pinder. It is Broadcom. Device PID BCM 4312. That might be what I need. Yeah. 802.11G. <coughs> BCM 4312. <coughs> <coughs> so I was right. It's a Broadcom. So the, the Wi-Fi and the um, <coughs> wireless is, let's see. I'll go ahead and oops. Uh oh. Well, that worked this time. So I didn't lose my password this time. Okay, let's see if it'll work well enough for me to. I'm talking about the. Uh, I switch. I did it without remembering to switch things. 
So that you know the 1395 that is the model or whatever. Uh, but see, I did a search through here for wireless, and the first thing that came up was what I wanted: 1395 wireless WLAN mini card, vendor, Broadcom, device PCI BCM. And that sounds familiar. BCM 4312. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna search for BCM 4312 and see if that comes up. It could be that this would all come up just fine in Fedora and not in. Uh, see again, it says sub device wireless 1395 WLAN mini car. So I guess you know it's like that 1395 may be the chip. I'm I'm not sure. Oh now it's going out of whack. It's not happening on the computer. It's happened that just because I paged down, it made it work. It's not showing up. Looks like I messed up the uh, file, but I didn't. Uh, and that's aggravating. Okay, uh, I think I went back to normal now. Sort of. Oh, now I did mess something up. I hit my. I have my wireless keyboard, the one that's connected straight to that uh, machine, right in front of me. Better move it. Well, actually, let's don't move it because I think I'm fixing that to use it again. I don't think, for some reason, my, I mean, I can't reboot my router that, that, that it's on. I just did it before I started. That's what's aggravating. Last time it worked much better. But anyway, it, I can't reboot that router. Well, I could with it up and running. I could log into it and try rebooting it. But uh, before we try a bunch of that stuff, let's see. We want to do. I'm going to close that now because I have all that information. Close that. Uh, it's just I just don't read well in uh, um, command line window as well as I do in a. It's not going where <coughs> as I do in the word processor. Plus, I can search in the word processor. Some command line terminal apps you can search in them too, but I don't know if you could in that one or not. Oops. What do I just do? Well, it's uh, the refresh rate is so bad on the uh, remote desktop that I, I just can't use it. So go back to here. Maybe I should uh, try to fix that somehow. Let's see. Put that mouse down and grab this other one. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are showing the camera. It has the laptop. Okay. It's really confusing trying to figure out what the screen to look at. Okay, so, uh, oh, that's the hardware lister web page, the GitHub page for the, the, the author of it. Okay, and where is, where's my little file? There's my little file. Okay, so you can't be read at all in the video. That stinks. Okay, um, go to Synaptic. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and try to fix my messed up. I guess what I could do is get up there and just do it. Be easier than instead of trying. You can, you know, reboot these routers. But like I was saying, writing to a friend earlier, doing a soft reboot doesn't actually help this, the same as turning them off and turning them back on. So I'm going to jump up there and do that. Uh, let me do that. Now, while it's rebooting, we'll probably see the notification up at the top right. Say, you know, uh, usually it doesn't say you lost your connection. It just it just says, oh, you now you have a connection. So, <sighs> what it does is, you know, disconnect it and reconnect it, but. Uh, may not I'm of course if it, if the uh, notice was going to be working then I would be messing it up by fiddling around there let's see but uh, you right click on it connection information 10.102 yeah I don't believe it's changed <clears throat> it should have had enough time to reconnect by now 
So let me go back to my desktop and see if I connect to it again. Okay. Um, yeah, it's still good. Okay. Oh, I think what happens is after during a reboot is when you lose the. Uh, I did reboot it once though, so I don't know about that. Why that l password got lost? Maybe it wasn't actually lost, and it was just I was typing it wrong and thought I was doing good. Okay, so now we're back on our remote desktop again. Let's see if it will refresh enough for us to. Just it's just not readable on the camera. It's just kind of ridiculous to try it, but it's not refreshing at all I don't know what's wrong with everything today could be the let's see I'm going through two routers could be the other router in between and think about that let me reboot the other one I'm just going to break the connections all together and get if it changes the IP addresses, which can happen when you reboot the routers. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, because they're all they're all generated dynamically, automatically by the routers. But uh, I bet you it won't even. Let's see if it's even going to work. I have no coordination tonight. Okay, that's working now. Yeah, it's just working perfectly over there on the laptop, but the refresh, the uh, what we're seeing over here is not working. So, don't really know. I mean, the router that I'm streaming with could be the one that needs to be rebooted uh, of them but uh I'll go back to the camera close down my remote desktop again and just not try that right now let's just since i'm right in the middle of trying to do something let's try to do it let's see what was it though get rid of that mouse get the one in my left hand Used to be really good at doing that, one mouse in each hand, but uh, not as good with it as I used to be. Oh yeah, the Wi-Fi driver. Trying to find the Wi-Fi driver. Okay, and I believe I already put it in the uh, copy and pasted it into the clipboard, so I should be able to paste it in Synaptic and search for it. I think I got it opening up. Might have missed the uh, button. My hands kind of slipped. Let's go ahead and try it again and see. Yeah, I had missed it. Okay. So, and I typed it wrong. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll search for BCM4312. Okay, we didn't get anything there. But let's, let's uh, separate them and see. Maybe it just didn't show up because I put them in as one word. Okay, let's get rid of the numbers. Oh, of course, BCM is going to be in there. <coughs> now, only problem about this is even hard for me. It's not, it, you can't read it at all, but I can really can't see that far away. 
<coughs> so I guess I'm going to have to either get my VNC working to, to be able to make any kind of video demonstrating this or and you know like re I don't know if rebooting my all you know all my routers well of course I did these two but it could be um, the main router the one going over to YouTube the TP link could be the one that's getting tired I'm, I'm, let me put get I'm getting myself closer to the uh, screen over there so I can try to read through some of that Yeah, that wasn't anything to do with any kind of Wi-Fi driver. So, um, this is way too awkward for me and too poor of a video to keep on fiddling with it like this. So what? But that's um, anyway the beginnings of uh, finding. You know, two things you need. You can do. You can use a software that will detect your hardware. See, that gave me quite a bit more information. Uh, and I've saved that on machine, so I still have that. And, of course, it's the whole list of all the hardware, so anything else you need to know. Sometimes you have to use two, three, or four of these apps to get all the information because one will do more than the other. Like that graphic one, it didn't. It, normally it does a, pretty much everything. I don't know why it didn't find so much. Maybe, you know, this one I ran as root. Maybe I should have ran that other one as root. It's a little more tricky to do that from your regular user, and I can't show it right now with everything messed up, so I won't even think about trying. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I need to, uh, before I continue to do any more videos on this laptop, I either got to get that VNC working well, which I guess I could try other viewers and stuff like that, but I can do that off camera, get it working, and then make a video. That would make more sense. Or I can try installing OBS Studio on the laptop there. With the Bane, it doesn't use as much resources as Fedora 25. Maybe it would work. Well, it never would even run because it was saying it had problems with video and stuff. It was saying maybe you need another video driver and all that, so it might not work. But I could try it and see. BNC is the easier way to do it. Uh, I mean, it's easier because I'd, I've tried quite a few times to get OBS Studio to work on this laptop and it I got it running a couple before and it in, in the previous I don't remember if I ever had it working for Fedora 21 but I, I remember now I had it working in Windows 7 but it couldn't keep up it would just lock up shut down and stuff so it probably would never work that's why I didn't go into trying to do that but uh, yeah Wi-Fi drivers of course with the laptop it doesn't matter to me so much and in, in as long as it's here in this room but I sometimes want to pick it up and take it with me you know I don't don't do that often but I definitely want it working so that if when and if I do it works so I got to figure all that out and that's what you one of the first things you'd probably want to do uh, with the you know when you get a new install of any, any brand any disk Linux distro on your uh, on your uh, laptop you know when it with you as you see the the wired it just it usually always works right off the bat with desktops and laptops if you have a ethernet port on there so you're good with that you know with the nice thing about the laptops it has you know they usually have both or at least this age of laptop does i don't i think maybe some of the newer ones don't they only have wi-fi and that really can be a pain i remember reading people talking about that saying that they were so frustrated because they couldn't it was so hard to get anything working right that couldn't do updates that couldn't do anything I mean you can do your install off of your USB or your DVD or whatever but you can't do much of anything else until you get Wi-Fi working and it's basically kind of hit and miss it depends on whether or not the manufacturer of that Wi-Fi chip shares enough code for the Linux people to write the drivers for it you know or or if they write one and make it available a proprietary driver 
And uh, it's way easier if they've shared the code and the Linux people will just include it in the, in the uh, repos, the repositories of the Linux distro. And, and that's what I'm looking for right now. And if I don't find it in the repos, then, uh, then I will have to go to the Broadcom website and look up all of what I just was showing, trying to show, and find a, a proprietary driver. And uh, I did have, let me go look right before I end this up. I'm going to go here on my computer. Um, let me move that over. Let's see, I'm still on that other laptop, that other, let me move this keyboard. <coughs> okay, so, um, so I have to go to my download backups, I believe. Kind of went through, actually I got on my old machine where I had all a bunch of this stuff and uh, copied it over to my, my backup drive here. Oh, okay, Dell 1525 laptop Broadcom wireless card driver. Maybe I don't remember it right. I was thinking what I had was the uh, video driver, but that's the Broadcom wireless card driver I have there. So yeah, there's a 64-bit. I already have it unzipped and a 30, that one there's a 32-bit. Now I'm remembering, it's all coming back. And then there's a Windows executable for it says multi-device. I imagine it'll ins install. Uh, probably got that off the Dell website. Yeah, it says Dell. Probably would help you install. It would either install or help you install. You know, uh, all the most of the drivers anyway, or maybe all of them. This right here, that's a Tar GZ that I'm on right now. That's the reg. Re you know, they unzipped the compressed files. So that maybe what I had to do is install the proprietary driver, but I don't want to do that unless I have to because I may have done that and at one point and then later on found the driver. In of course, maybe it's available in. Well, I've only ever had. I don't think I ever had to bane on this laptop. But like I said, uh, if you install the proprietary drivers, they should work fine until. You, but when you get a kernel update, which comes, you know, you always want to update your kernels, either whether you do your updates automatically or manually. And a lot of times, it's usually the video driver that breaks, uh, but sometimes it'll break. I remember that happened on that laptop one time. That my Wi-Fi driver did break with a kernel update, and it, took, it was a pain in the butt to fix. I think I ended up finding it, uninstalling it probably, and then installing the open source driver from the Fedora website. Maybe it became available. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't at the first. I don't remember. I'm kind of guessing here. Okay, uh, but yeah, that's I, I do believe, and uh, these files here are some of my runs in the console that would come in. Let's see what the title said. I always would save my command line output like I just did to help me remember things. Let's see, command to find the bra oh command to find the wireless card driver in the Dell 1525 laptop. Oh, so that would tell me everything I need to know. There we go. It's LSPCI dash. Yeah, I'd have to copy and paste that. So I need those files. I need to run. And since I can't show it to you, there's no point in me trying to do it now. And I'm really tired. And my throat's kind of hurting. But next time, that's what I'll, I get on this thing. That's what I need to do. What's this? That's those commands again. So yeah, if I'd looked in there, I kept feeling like maybe I should look in here from the beginning of all this Wi-Fi business with this, and I didn't do it. Con uh, console error with a make file. Now that may be that I had trouble and never actually got those drivers installed. I had the idea that I'd, even if I had them, I didn't want to install them because I want to get them out of the repos if I can. But uh, kmod kwl yum install kmod kwd. Of course, that's in Linux in Fedora. I mean. See if install Broadcom 4315. Okay, it's called Broadcom 4315. So you don't use that 1395 number, you use that 4315 number. And I already searched and didn't find that though, didn't I? So I may end up having to use the uh, that driver. And I found this in my backups of downloads, and as far as the uh, pages and all, I may have that in my bookmarks. Should if I can find them. 
But if they are, they may be in all, only in my bookmarks for that laptop, not in my bookmarks for this machine. That could be the thing. I used to sync them all. I was talking about syncing earlier in Firefox. I used to sync them all. And um, I'm going to open up my browser and kind of see that I'm still good. Uh, and one time I lost, and I didn't have any manual backups, and I lost like three or four months of bookmarks because it whacked out and deleted didn't just delete them from that machine, but for like from their server and everything. So I've never used it again. I saw a bunch of people complaining about that, and it hadn't. Ha I saw it before then and after then, <laughs> and on you know on like the Fedora, I mean the uh, Firefox website, and uh, I saw it ahead of time, and I thought, oh, it hadn't happened to me. I hope it doesn't happen to me. And, and I and I kept thinking, well, I better back up my bookmarks, and then I forgot to, didn't, and because you can just. Uh, Go in the bookmark manager and back up your bookmarks real easy. Uh, just go in the bookmark, you know, s view all bookmarks, and then go in the in the top menu there and back them up. Save them as a HTML file. And then you can uh, you can import them back into another machine manually, but then you end up with a lot of duplicates that way too, though. Let's see. <coughs> yeah, we're almost on a two-hour video anyway. So, um, yeah, so that number is not going to help me anyway. And that command is what I'm going to need. i got to remember <coughs> whether I, uh, like I said, I'll, I want to do a search. <coughs> like I'll open this file up. I've been sitting there looking at file names. And, well, it's going to be a bunch of console output. But, oh, that's just the command. Okay. So, um, very good. I did that so it'd be nice and clean and I could, uh, yeah, there's the command right there. So I would just, uh, I guess, why would you do 14E14? I don't know. But that's the command, and then you run it, and it, uh, <coughs> gives you the output right here. Maybe I did 14E14 because uh, I learned, and I don't know. I, I got that off a website somewhere, so let's look at the next one and see. <coughs> Don Localhost, Broadcom, VCM Wireless Driver. What is all this? Oh, that's the folder I was in. Yeah. LSPCI, same thing, same command. And I had it, I did it as root. And it tells you that you have the 14E144315. Well, I figured that out by looking at uh, my hardware lister app for, that I have a 4315. But that didn't come at, up in Synaptic. I could look for 14E4 and see if that came up. I don't understand where I got that 14E4 or where that came from because. You don't normally, I mean, that would be like a specific part of that command, I think. Like you're looking for, somehow you already knew that uh, that was the type, you know, model range or whatever that you're looking for. What's this? Ah. Uh, yeah. I was running the make file for that driver. <coughs> it's a syntax error unexpected kernel release to so see it wouldn't even run on at that time could have been because it would only work on an, that was on a different I don't know what that doesn't give me what uh, distro I was even running that in but it was uh, uh, yum I know that I mean it was running in yum so it was running uh, now here's an install that worked Therefore, I ran the command to get all get all that, and then, and then uh, I pretty sure I ran the commands to install it the way it looks. Cause down here, it works. But this is not, you know, this is not installing from the repos. This is installing that file that I have. So uh, wait a minute, I'm wrong. That's coming from the repos. So, uh, but I'm in that folder. Maybe I just started in that folder. 
just because you're in that folder don't mean you see that su that's that's a special command i must have got that off of broadcom website or something Well, that says no package given for for install. Let's just keep going down through here. Might have been that I tried it, tried to run it, and then got tired of fooling with it. <laughs> and uh, wait, looks like I downloaded something. Yeah, downloaded them. Maybe the ones that I have, and then I just kept them. You know, after that. <coughs> Shift the RPM file. That's one thing. Well, those, yeah, these are RPMs. Now you could just run those in Fedora, and just install them. You wouldn't have to. <coughs> you can just right click on them and say oh, run with you know install with uh, yeah. RPM UVH. That's a special repo, I think, or something. Yum, install kmod okay that's that's to help you get your kernel up uh, your kernel updates to install along with these other uh, I think I can't remember if it pulls in your what drivers or if it makes your kernel updates wait until the drivers are available I can't remember exactly how it works but kmod and akmod will, will help will straighten that mess out of getting broken stuff when you want to you do want to install the kmod the right K mods and the right or the right and or the right act mods with your uh, if you're gonna have a proprietary drivers. If you're gonna install any proprietary drivers. Yeah. One of these was not found. Oh, oh that's coming from open SUSE. Then I guess it found the right uh, one, another repo that would work because it goes on and starts doing stuff. Will be installed. Kmod WL. Okay. This won't be the exact same thing in Debane though. So the dependencies were resolved. So the last command run was. It was this one RPM UVH. Then it started all this. And it went on down, and it went ahead and installed di all this. Ask if you want to do it. So that's how I had installed it at one point there. And that is a Broadcom BCM4312 wireless driver. But I believe you can just go right into the repos with, uh, you know, like YUM or DNF and find them and install them in the GUI without having to do all this. And you can't do none of this will work in Debane anyway. Okay, now let's see what we got here. Oh, that was the Kmod installs. Anyway, that wasn't the driver installs. Yeah, yeah, I'm install Kmod WL. Okay, now I'm starting to understand it. Oh, and then I ran it again, and there's nothing to do because it was already installed. Sometimes, you know, if you're not sure if it worked and you're not quite sure you understand everything, just run to that command again, yum install kmod wl and this is nothing to do so you say oh it worked okay so read me this is the uh, broadcom hybrid linux driver this would be the yeah, wireless driver <coughs> yeah here you go those read me is the first thing you want to read when you download some uh you know file or with us any kind of zip or you know any kind of compressed file that's going to you're going to install from these are tar gz's but it's a compression file compression just like zip if you're familiar with that i mean it's not just like it but it's different anyway this will give you a bunch of explanations tells you which supported devices yeah see they're not listening by that 13 i just from somehow I remember that 13 well now here it is 1395 there we go see so the dell product id is 1395 the brcm broadcom is 4312 this is where it all gets really freaking confusing oh and the pci vendor id is 0x14e4 so that's where that uh, part of that command came from 
So this is maybe where I don't remember at all how I figured all that out, but somehow I did. I mean, and I didn't write those commands out myself. I copied and pasted them. Or I probably copied and pasted some portion of it from a website and then found out what, like that 14E4 to put in there or something. Actually, all of these are 14E4, so. And sometimes if you know, if you can find the right commands, it may be easier to you do what I did there and type the commands out and uh, install that way than it is to find it in Synaptic or Yum or DNF. Because unless you know specifically what to look for, you may never find it. <coughs> Sometimes you can just for search, you can search for Wi-Fi and you may come up with a list or wireless drivers or Wi-Fi drivers come up with, you may come up with a, such a long list. You uh, Well, now I'd know how to narrow it down though. So that might be what I do next. But I'll do that next time. And uh, so anyway, there's a, a good starting point on how to figure out your wireless drivers. Um, you gotta, you've got to go from different sources. You know, you got you actually look at the hardware. Just take that little cover. It's easy to take off the bottom of your laptop. Use the hardware listed apps, different different ones. Try to tie. You may have to try two or three or four. <coughs> uh, I don't remember. If I, and like I said, if I had a better memory, I could tell you names of several apps, but see how that goes. But uh, <coughs> anyway, uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> that's a good sign that I'm at the end of my broadcast because I can't talk anymore. Um, yeah, that's everything always takes 10 times longer than you think it will. And I didn't really have a clear aim of what I was going to do today anyway. I just wanted to do something on it. So anyway, I, I uh, at least kind of showed the beginnings and the, what can be very frustrating. So maybe that around and around here and there about figuring out what I've done before. <laughs> maybe that'll help some people, you know, with uh, figuring that out. Uh, I, could, I, I really, I used to actually be able to explain things concisely and you know go straight to the point but can't do it anymore so sorry about that but uh, <clears throat> anyway that is uh, if you kind of if you if you had actually followed along through the install process of Fedora and now Debane on this laptop you can see that Installing the operating, downloading, and you know, figuring out where to go to download it might be a little bit of a trick. It is with the Bane, uh, but installing is really pretty easy if you can just follow instructions. Unless you run into some really hard problems, it, the, the hardest part actually is getting it on your USB stick sometimes, especially if you already have data on there. Especially if you go on, you have Fedora on there, and then you want to take it off and put the Bane on there, it can run you around in circles, and yet I learned over years and years of form you know formatting and reformatting i learned all those little tricks i showed <sighs> and there's always there's lots of different you know there's 20 ways to skin a cat but uh um anyway um <clears throat> and then once you get it installed uh you know things like getting your wi-fi driver that'll be the other things that might end up being a hurdle so even though these videos are long and everything uh It'll save you weeks, days, days, weeks, months, and even years of <laughs> research. <laughs> I guarantee you that. So uh, flip, you know, you can skip through the. Uh, maybe you can kind of learn how to skip what's going to be a bunch of <laughs> mumbling and jumbling and get to the good bits. I don't know, but I definitely don't. Never going to have time to. I tried for years. I held back videos for years, and thinking I need, you know, I wanted to edit them and make them as good as I could, and. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to get them edited. So I, so I got into this live video thing. But um, it takes, you know, if you have an hour's worth of video footage, it'll take you six to eight hours to edit it down to 30 minutes. <laughs> and I guess you could go 10, 10 or 20 minutes, but you wouldn't have. I just can't cut. Myself, I can't cut that much of my own hard work out. <laughs> Uh, I, it, usually, if you talk for an hour, 30 minutes of it is kind of what's the important information is for, with me, anyway. So, uh, and this one here is two hours, so you know it could easily it could be eight hours to two days of work to edit it down. So, anyway, okay. 
next time I'll try to remember. I will always go back and review the videos and tell see, see where I was at. Well, I usually do. I didn't do that today. That's probably one of the reasons why I was kind of lost. But uh, yeah, next time I'll come pick back up on the try to pick, pick back up on the Wi-Fi drivers and maybe I get something working to where I can really show it too. You know, hopefully I get my VNC work straightened out and working good. Maybe if I just use a different viewer, it'll work better or something. Maybe I'll try the K. A KDE viewer, maybe it'll work better with the KRFB and Vino. So, actually, Vino's what the server is. So, and actually, I may it, the the bane may not be my next video. My next video might be on installing Fedora 25 on my Lenovo R5 because I'm really gonna have to do that soon. It's getting completely full. Need to get rid of all that wasted space and start new. All right, well, let's shut this old laptop down. Let's see, there we go. Well, it's running good though. I can I can use it right now for the main thing I wanted to, you know, watching videos and stuff. Just doesn't have a Wi-Fi driver yet. Okay, well, let's see. Guess there's nothing more to show here. I'm looking around. I'm not showing it, but I'm looking around on the desktop to make sure. <clears throat> okay, this is Dawn, and uh, bye for now. We'll see you later. Mm -hmm.